Uh, it is Saturday morning, uh, and I thought I'd do a little quick video on something that I've been playing around with lately, which is building React apps uh, with Ruby on Rails. So generally speaking, there's kind of two main ways to do this. Uh, and one of the ways, which is the more, I think, common way uh, up until recently, and might still be, is basically to create two completely separate applications. So you have your React front-end application, and then you have this back-end Rails API. Uh, and then what you can do is make requests from your React app to the Rails API, uh, and that's kind of how the two would interact. And then how that might look from a production standpoint is you might deploy the Rails API portion of your app to you know Heroku or similar, uh, and then you can deploy, let's say, the React portion to something like surge.sh, uh, and basically just make API requests from your React app to the Rails API you've set up. And that's kind of how the two would interact. So now there's a second way that you can also do this as of I think around Rails 5.1-ish. Uh, and what we can do now is we can actually build everything housed in a single directory, which is what we're gonna focus on uh, in this video. So let's just jump into it. Uh, you can see I've got my terminal pulled up over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new Rails app. But what we're gonna do right out of the gate is we're actually gonna set this up with React uh, and it's really easy to do. So what we're gonna do that you might be familiar with is you can do Rails, new, and then the name of your app. So let's just do React app. But where this changes for our purposes is I'm gonna add dash dash webpack and then I'm gonna set it equal to React. So now when I run this, it's gonna build out our new Rails app, but it's gonna set us up to actually use React. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And you can see now it's building out our Rails app. Um, but what's gonna happen is it's gonna run a couple of additional commands uh, after it goes through the basic Rails app setup. So you can see it's running through that now. So we'll just give that a minute. So now that that's done running, you can see we've built out our new Rails app, but what we can see right here is that we've set up Webpacker to support React. So let's go ahead and CD into our new app. Uh, so you can see now I'm inside of the new app that we just created. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and open that up in Sublime so we can take a look at it really quickly. Okay, so now we're inside of our new Rails app uh, and everything here should look pretty standard for the most part. But there's one new thing that I wanna highlight as of, I think, Rails 5.1. Uh, if we jump over into app, what you have now is a JavaScript folder. Uh, and this is where all of our React is gonna live. So if we look in here, you'll see some default uh, files that they've already added for us. So you can see this hello react.jsx file. So if we look at this, you can see there's uh, this hello const. Uh, you can see it's basically doing hello and then props.name. Uh, and then they're passing in the name react down here so it's basically just a simple little hello world that they put in as a demo for you right out of the gate so now i think what would be helpful is to kind of work through how this actually gets rendered into the view files of your rails application uh, because as of right now if we were to fire up uh, you know our Rails server uh, this isn't going to show yet uh, for a couple of reasons one we haven't actually set up a root path uh, and two this isn't getting rendered into any of our view files yet um, so they kind of explain how to do this up here, but let's just run through a quick example. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new pages controller and set up an index for us. And then I'm gonna set up the root of our app to go to that pages index. And then what we can do is inject our React into that new file. Um, so let's jump back into the terminal and I'm gonna go ahead and create a pages controller using a generator. So let's do rails g controller pages. And then I wanna set up an index method. So I'm gonna hit enter and that'll generate a new controller for us. Cool, so now if we jump back into our app, if we look in our controllers, we should have uh, a new pages controller with an index method we do. Um, so I'm gonna jump in and config and I wanna set up our uh, root path. So I'm just gonna get rid of this and do root uh, pages index. And now if we fire up our uh, Rails server using Rails S in our terminal, when we navigate to localhost 3000, uh, the default root page of our app will be our pages index. Uh, so what we can do then is we can jump into our views and we can jump into pages and index here. And what we want to do is basically inject that uh, React from our JavaScript folder into our index file here. So in order to do that, if you look back uh, in this file, they give you an example here of the JavaScript pack tag. Uh, so what we want to do is just copy that and over in our index file, we can just inject that here. Um, so now let's see, we're running our server, uh, so we should be all good. So now if I jump into Chrome and go to localhost 3000, cool, so we can see just like that, we are now loading our React components into our index view file. Okay, so now let's expand on this a little bit more. So I'm going to create a uh, components folder inside of our JavaScript folder 
in our app here. And then what we can do is start creating our own components to expand on this. So I'm gonna do a new folder and I'm just gonna call it components. Uh, and inside of that, let's create a new file and I'm just gonna call that app.js. Uh, and now what we want to do is in this file we're going to import React from React uh, and then we want to create uh, a new class and call it app uh, and our class is going to extend react.component uh, and then inside of this we'll do render and then we'll do return uh, and then inside of this we'll add some custom code. So let's do our own just quick little hello world just so we're comfortable with creating a components folder, creating our own uh, components, and then injecting them back into our page. Uh, so inside of this, I'm just gonna do, uh, you know, div hello world, uh, and then let me fix the uh, formatting here. And then down here, I'm just gonna do export default app. Uh, so now what we can do is back in our main page, and I'm actually, I'm just gonna rename this to index.js. So now we actually don't need a lot of this, so we can go ahead and delete pretty much all of that, uh, clear that out. And what we want to do is, I can delete this too. We want to import our app component from the uh, components folder that we just created. So I'm going to do import app from uh, components slash app. Uh, and then what we can do is we can just get rid of this and replace it with app. Uh, and then back in our index, we're putting in the JavaScript pack tag. We want to change this to index just because I changed the naming from uh, hello react to index.js for that file. Um, so now if we go back in here and we refresh our page, we can see we now have our customized hello world uh, message that we created in our app component there. Cool, so now we have our components folder and we've built a custom component and brought it back into our application.